What kind of music are you listening to, first of all? Because that's the one thing that I've always wondered about. Uh, I listen to today's top hits. Oh, oh you Spotify. are boring as hell. <laughs> <laughs> that's so basic. I don't know why Raz got merch before I did. <laughs> um, I didn't get any of the new collection from C9 One Piece. Mine came with a letter, too. That was like, thank you for your years of service. And oh, I, years of service? <laughs> yeah, years of oh. service. Yes. Bomber hasn't done any years of service for C9. <laughs> Cloud9 is hosting a World's Finals watch party on November 2nd at 7 a.m. in the Cloud9 Discord. Tune into League's biggest event of the year to win giveaways and earn Club9 points just by showing up. It'll be a low pressure, low commitment event, so come by and hang out with us. There might even be some surprise guests. Hey guys, welcome back to the Cloud9 Forecast, episode 12. Today, we have a very special guest. You know him as the funniest, most handsome, dedicated C9 fan. Welcome, Raz. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, thank Raz. You. you are right about me being a dedicated C9 fan and advocate. That's why you guys sent me this beautiful jacket, the shirt underneath. I love One Piece and I love C9, so of course, um, I don't know why you're not repping it. I didn't get any from C9 yet. I don't know yeah, what's going mine? on. I don't know why Raz got merch before I did. <laughs> um, I didn't get any of the new collection from C9 One Piece. Mine came with a letter, too, that was like, thank you for your years of service. And oh, I, years, I, of service. <laughs> yeah, years of oh. service? Years of service. Yes. Bummer I, hasn't done any years of service for C9. <laughs> I, I, look, I feel like you need to step your game up, brother. So just from me to you, if you want to get this jacket, you got to put in a little bit more work. Yeah, I'll put in some more time to C9. I haven't really put in that many. <laughs> okay. Does that mean we should expect some Raz C9 predictions on the desk? Oh, I, I, I'm, I don't know if you want that. <laughs> I swear my predictions have been complete ass. Like You're bad at predictions? Yes. So if you want me to predict for the opposing team, that might help you out going further. Huh, my okay. world's pickums have just been egregious. I refuse to look at them anymore. I stopped predicting after quarterfinals. Dude, I'm so triggered. Like, I, I picked Gen G, but then I swapped to T1, but then it didn't swap for me. So now... So now I'm not in the top 5,000. I was doing so well, by the way. I was like, I was literally like ranked 200 or something. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm like, I don't know. Now, now I'm not going to get the, the Viego skin. Wait, that's what happened? Wait, you get a skin? Yeah, you get like the world's Viego skin if you're in the top 5,000. Is that the only way to get it? I have no idea. Oh. What I, the I, hell? I, just, I just checked the thing and it said rewards for being in a certain like... Dude, I didn't even do pickums. I didn't know there's rewards. Yeah, and then there there's some rewards for being in a certain group. Now I'm just an S tier, but I don't want to be an S tier because you don't get the Viego skin. Oh, that's, that's actually a, crazy. That's a bummer. They, Wait, you, you really bet Genji over T1? Yeah. No, I meant to pick T1. It's <laughs> yeah. just I picked it like, like I picked it like earlier, like earlier in the like, week, like like a week ago, like yesterday, like, I, like during the series. No, not <laughs> 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 no. Oh god, I picked T one by the way. Whatever. Anyways, anyways. Halfway through game one. Anyways, anyways. <laughs> as soon as they were about to win, I picked them. <laughs> <laughs> it just it didn't work. The website just like, wasn't functioning. It's the fucking website, by the way. Like you have to trust me on this one. <laughs> Let's get into it. When was the first time Blabber slash Medios met Raz? <laughs> Actually, I don't. I don't remember yeah. at all. I don't, I don't either. Yeah. Actually, I have, I have no, no idea. idea. <laughs> when I, I first met Raz. I know the content we've done, and I know I ran it. Like I started doing interviews this year with a, like a lot of the desk people. Um, but I mean, we've run into each other. Sometimes it's awkward running into you because you have your entire morning routine. When you get into the office, you're listening to music, you're vibing out, you're just going from one one location to another. Focused on something. I don't know what you're focusing, and I don't know what you're listening to. Oh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't talk to people when I get to the. I mean, I don't like if someone says hi to me, I'll say hi. Yeah. But like usually, I just I get there, I put on my music, then I go to the bathroom, I get like something to drink, and then usually a banana, and yeah. then I'll sit in my room for like half an hour or to an hour, and then I'll walk, get up, walk a bit, do some stretches, and then. Yeah, then we're on stage. What kind of music are you listening to, first of all? Because that's the one thing that I've always wondered about. Uh, I listen to today's top hits. Oh, oh you are boring as hell. <laughs> that's so basic. Yeah, you can you can tell too, because I've been streaming recently, and that's all I listen to. And then my my viewers are asking me like, "Do you get bored of listening to the same shit?" And I'm like, "I mean, I don't really care. Like, I, I just switch it up." Yeah. When people are like, "Can you switch it up?" I'm like, "Sure." But like, I I listen to all types of music. For me, it's just like, I like having noise. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but I'm just used to it. No, I just like having noise, so like I don't really care. Like white noise on stage to me is the same thing as music. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like listening to white noise, same thing. Do have you ever? Uh, wait, do you listen to music when you scrim? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Okay, but 
I'm I, not supposed to. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember <laughs> I used to always listen to music when I scrammed, and then I was on one team where my coach saw I was listening to music, and he got, like, super pissed at me and said it was the most disrespectful thing ever. I was just like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, what is happening? Like, I always do this. <laughs> yeah. All the time. No, yeah. R- more recently, I haven't been listening to music, um, but... Before, do you put on like, white noise? No, I don't. I, oh. I just I've tried that before. It's it's a little too extra, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit much. It definitely will lose you focus. I think so. Like I feel like I would have seen you medios off of like because you do a lot of like LCS content. Yeah. Um, I forget what show it was originally. It was like a few years ago when the, there was like a roundtable kind of in. Interviews. Oh, I think it was Next Level with yes with a uh, Kaizen. Yeah, we, yeah, we'd have a bunch of guests on. That was cool. That was like I remember that was one of them and i know you've been on the desk a few times so i feel like that would have been i feel like we would have at least talked earlier but my mind is so i can't even remember what the hell i ate this morning so i'm generally just not i'm I, my memory is so damn awful when it comes to actually meeting people for the first time you, you know what i think it is too it's mm. like when you see people on broadcast yeah. right or like you watch someone stream it's sometimes it's hard to separate that from like your personal interactions with them. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if you've seen like a certain caster or desk person a bunch on stream and then you interact with them later on, it's like, I don't really remember. That's true. Which one was a personal interaction. The only time I'll ever notice it is if someone is just different than they are on broadcast, which just hasn't been the case at all, which has actually been the one thing that I was, I, w- I wouldn't say surprised about, but. Whenever you're actually talking to someone the first time that you've seen them either play or um, just be on broadcast for the most part, you're like, okay, there has maybe there's something different to them, you know, when they're more personal and the camera's off. Uh, that's never been the case, which makes it harder to remember those first interactions. Um, the only thing that's usually different, and this happens to me, I need to stop this, is that you just cuss more. <laughs> you know, like, that's true. That's, I, true. that's <laughs> actually just the biggest difference. I, I've had to reduce how much I've cussed drastically, and I still cuss a lot. So that needs to stop. There's one word, and I'm not going to say here, that I've had to completely put the zero. And it's, you know, it may be a specific word to who I am as a person. <laughs> and it was because I it just... Could it, be any word. It, it could, <laughs> be could be anything. could be anything. And, there's, and it, because it dribbles into, like, your broadcast stuff, right? Because there's yeah. sometimes when you're just too casual and it just comes out. When I was in LPL, there was one moment when I was on desk and I was too casual and I may have said, like... You know, whatever, you know, and we're pleased. <laughs> I may have said that. And then I realized, oh, shit, I'm on broadcast. Um, but thankfully, like, no one noticed it, especially because, like, viewership during regular season games is not that much during LPL in 2019 and all that. And then on top of that, my producers were, like, Chinese producers, and they had no idea what the hell I just they said. They didn't even know what you were saying? Yeah, actually. So I was like, well, mental note, reduce that. But I still say it, like, when I get scared. If I'm wa- playing a scary game... <laughs> And something's happening on stream. I get shocked. The word is coming out. I've already gotten two of my friends in trouble. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> when I was okay, there was an Ovily stream that happened. Me, Ovily, and Flowers when we were playing. Um, it was Minecraft. Yes, yeah, that's got, a scary I, one. Yeah, scared in Minecraft because I went digging in a tunnel with Flowers, and I think I saw one of those bone skeletons or one of those. Um, what are they called again? Something they they just nuke themselves. Creepers. Creepers. Yep. And it was just like out of nowhere. I get caught off guard, blurted out. Obli's like, what the fuck? Was this your first time playing Minecraft? This was my, I think it was. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, Blair, did you grow up in Minecraft? Uh, n- no, but I did play, uh, I guess so, yeah. Um, but I didn't play that much. I just played like a little bit with my friends from time to time. Okay. Yeah, I played more like League and CS and wow. I see. Dude, I always, I always feel like I was born in the wrong generation because I swear if I was one of those five year olds with an iPad in Minecraft, yeah. like my life would have been so different. Like, Dude, I, I probably probably not better, but I, I, I absolutely. <laughs> when I see one of those kids, I'm like, yeah, that definitely would have been me. I don't 100%. know. Maybe it would have been better. Me when I, I have a like a ten year old cousin. Maybe he's five. I can't remember anymore. Maybe I should remember that. But. Uh, Dude, he's playing Minecraft, like making these complex structures, and I'm like, dude, at your age, I am not as creative as it, you. Isn't Roblox like the new popular thing for kids? Or yeah, I think so. I feel like Roblox is more popular among kids, or maybe not. Minecraft is really popular. Bro, but they are making games in Roblox. Yeah, yeah, kids, yeah, they're yeah, making yeah. games. I was like, what the hell is going on? I am. So I think it's better for their creative juices. Maybe not now that they're just like 
tied to a computer I mean, since their birth. The, they don't take their. I feel like a lot of kids don't even take their eyes off of like their iPad or their whatever because. I still don't think a lot of kids have phones, but like mm-hmm. when they have their iPad, I always see like kids with iPads everywhere I go, and then they're just playing games all the time. Everyone's just fucking playing games. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how old were you guys when you got your first phone? I think I was in like high school slash. Yeah, I was in like late high school. Late, wow. high, school. I got late my, high school. I got my first phone in ninth grade, so fourteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I think mine was eighth grade, but it was one of those like shitty phones that couldn't even text. It was yeah. Yeah, my my first phone was an it's iPhone. Nokia. Uh, my first phone was an iPhone, and then I've used iPhone literally ever since. Okay, okay. So yeah. That's a bit of a flex, iPhone. but I had like a, one of those flip phones. Oh god, like I enjoyed the hell out of them. They were like Nokia flip phones or something that just you could not use it for getting onto the internet. And if even if you could do it, it wasn't good. Yeah, it yeah. was like the most uncomfortable thing to be able to do that because you just had like the text was through one through nine. So you yeah, just have yeah, to like. Yeah. Dial I, in the I text. was actually I was crazy at, at T9 texting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Raz, you recently got back from Worlds. Yes. How long were you there for? Um, I was there for about two and a half weeks. Uh, I was there at start of play-ins into first half of Swiss. Okay. And and how was that? Like, what was your experience like? It was really fun. Um, the first so the play-ins part was hilarious because um, the hotel that we were in was like. Like, you know, it may have been in like an airport hotel. So that experience of like, there's nothing really around you that you could do. Uh, and when I say you could do like finding any kind of groceries or food, that part was hard. Oh, the, really? It was actually insane. That doesn't insane. sound good. <laughs> that, it was actually insane. No food. Okay. <laughs> well, you could. You could just order it and they had breakfast in the hotel. And I'll, I just get hotel food anyways, like because I'm just that lazy. But I was like, okay, this is pretty ridiculous. Um, I had to learn specific German phrases because usually when I fly into a location, I will not bring certain things like toothbrush, toothpaste, and stuff. Because I think it will just stuff up my bag and I can just get it when I'm there. Yeah. And then I realized I had to change my thinking on that. Because when I went there, I'm like, oh, it it's hard to get, first of all. Especially if you're in, like, a barren area around a hotel. And then also, um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, dude, the razor blades cut my ass up. <laughs> it was the worst, man. What? It was <laughs> bad. <laughs> For shaving? Well, yeah, because the closest ones around me were the cheapest razor blades you can get. Okay, okay. Even if I was trying to be precise, it was a war zone. So, like, other than that, that that part was difficult. But the world experience itself was always great because, um, you know, you're seeing friends and colleagues that you rarely get to see. You only get to see really, like, twice a year. Um, So you're just catching up a lot of the times on what's going on in their lives. Um, And also the special thing about, like, world and MSI is, like, you just get to see a lot of players from around uh, the world come together. And a lot of them are, like, consistent players. Like, for instance, Levi, you'll see a lot. Um, uh, that's, like, one example. Maple, you'll see a lot. Like, yeah. there's going to be players consistently from minor regions that you can't, that you get to see again. And handlers and coaches and all these things that you never really get to catch up. So there's, like, it, you have, like, that special feeling. Um, and I generally do a lot of prep. So this world was like probably the most hectic because I was on day one or day two, but it's like one of the intro days for play-ins. And I was on intro days for Swiss stage, which means you're introducing basically like nearly every team. Yeah. So I had like a 60 page doc or something. And I was like, because I want to at least get the basics. I want to get the basics done. So the most important thing is like 60 pages. That's a lot of pages. So like (laughs) half of it is watching the games and saying specifically like what this team's style is, but also what their flaws are. And most of the time with plans teams, it's the same damn thing. Like, they're fundamental a lot of the time to other problems. Um, um, and, you know, they just become a team that plays brute force team fighting because they don't know how to play through sides or win through sides. So, like, a lot of that can be consistent. But I'm like, I want to get that out there so I can make specific references um, to their games. And then there's just, like, player history and accolades that you can, r- ram- like, r- kind of ramble off. Um, in the short time that you have on broadcast. Yeah, okay. So I try and get as many players out as I can out there. I don't think it's efficient. I'll say that right now. <laughs> so it's not a great thing. <laughs> I can definitely shorten it down to like 30 uh, or 20. But then it's like an active... It turns. It starts with a doc that I have for prep, and then it's an active doc throughout the tournament. So it's 60 pages, honestly, just because after a certain point, maybe like 40 or something, I'm just still using it for notes on the tournament. Dude, um, that's... That's crazy amount of prep. <laughs> I don't mm. think I've ever done something close to that. That's pretty cool, though. D- what was, like, the coolest thing you found while you were prepping? Like, do you, are there any, like, insane facts about a player or team that just, like, blew your mind? Oh, that's a good one. So my memory's not going to be able to catch one immediately. I would say that um, 
for me, when it for Vietnam, whenever it comes to VK and Gam, their history is like pre interlinked because there are just a like bunch of players that are either played for Gam that went to VK or the fact that SOFM is the coach and you can already go on the whole kind of coach slash owner and you can go into the whole spe spiel about uh, SOFM as a player. Um, and then the accolades are just like I have one page of just fully of like Faker's accolades or some players that are literally like, OK, so he's won a bunch of championships, both domestically, yeah. uh, internationally. Um, so like one thing that surprised me, I'm not sure. Um, but in terms of like just getting it all in front of you and getting familiarized with it, that's like a grueling task. I can probably pull, pull, pull it up, but I don't want to waste too much time here. But um, I don't know about anything that surprised me. Maybe just like just player accolades. Because whenever you see it, like you can talk about it, but when you see it in front of you, you're like, that player is old as hell <laughs> and successful as hell. Yeah, dude, mm. I think I was on like Reddit yesterday reading about Faker, mm -hmm. and I saw some comment that was like, you know, you could divide Faker's career in half mm -hmm. and like, he would probably be number one and two. Yeah, with, yeah, with, with, with both halves, like that's so ridiculous. <laughs> that's actually so insane. It's like, insane. It's it's crazy. I'll say the process of watching every vod. Sometimes it can be frustrating. I remember so watching the VK finals. Even though now that I mentioned it prior, that's I had to bring it up. Mm -hmm. There are some moments where you're like, okay, this team is a really strong team fighting team, and they play around their eighty carry. That's fair. Then you watch a dragon fight where, literally, like Callista first, like just is able to freshly buy a Blade of the Rune King, deploys on the map, top lane. Literally goes top lane. The rest of the team is setting up for Dragon. They take the fight, lose the fight, and you're like, okay, why the heck? Why the <laughs> hell is Callista top? Like, what? Why are they even fighting without it? Like, they know he's not there, too. Yes. And they still go to fight. Yes. And so, like... <laughs> Someone made the call, man. We're fighting Dragon. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're fighting. We're, we're this fighting, was the fighting, call. We're, we're sticking to it. Actually, I've, I've done that. I, you know, when I fought for Crab, I said, I'm fighting for this Crab, and then no one came to that. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> was, 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 was that the infamous one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, yo, I need this Crab. <laughs> you did? You got the Crab, didn't you? I, I got it. <laughs> but nice. I lost the Dragon, so I don't know what they were fighting. For they didn't even get the dragon. True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, was it this year that Vietnam had like their crazy like win trading scandal? I think it, that I think was last play. No, I think there was a uh, spring split? split for sure. Yeah. Spring split, but it was, it was this year. It was this, it was this year, year, yeah. year. Yeah, and that was, that was crazy because yeah. What was like the the fallout for that? Like, mm -hmm. wasn't it almost every team was involved in some way? There like, was, like there were some players. It was every team. It was every team. It was every team. <laughs> it was every team. <laughs> I think it was literally but, every team. Yeah. yeah. I think it was literally and every there team. Was, and, and they had some, like, there were some players that ended up, like, you know, they were on the list initially, but then after investigation were cleared. So I was okay. like, that's nice. And there are other players that were just completely, you know, they're completely cooked because of it. And that shit is really hard. Because I remember during spring finals for their region, they literally just had the most sham kind of playoffs oh, yeah. because you just have... You only, only, didn't, like, SOFM play? play? Yeah. yeah, SOFM played. They yeah. only had, like, four teams. It was it was crazy, yeah. I, uh, I I remember looking at it like briefly in spring, um, and I saw that one team was literally zero and twenty four or something, like in, in their not their series record but like their game record. And I was like, I, I didn't think they were win trading or anything, but I was yeah. like, that's fucking, that's, that's fucking that's crazy. making it a little too I'm obvious. Like, <laughs> I'm like, that's fucking crazy. Then then it came out like on on um. Online, and then I saw that team literally every single player, including like coaches and stuff. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I mean, <laughs> I was like, bro, I was literally thinking, zero and 24, that's crazy. Like, that, that's what I was thinking. It's actually so fun. Sometimes you can just see it. I mean, I'm not watching Vietnam, so I like, I'll not be able to see those games, but I'm sure if I'm a like a Vietnamese fan watching those games regular season and all, you can be like, this team is not naturally making these mistakes. There is a problem happening here. There was a player in uh, Oceania for quite some time that had, like, allegations of win trading. His name was, like, Chen Shuan. Mm -hmm. And, like, I remember the allegations happened earlier, and he was, like, on a team, and he was doing it during their scrims. So the team was, like... Wait, he, was he was win trading scrims? scrims? <laughs> what was crazy? I don't what know. was the flood of doing <laughs> that? I don't know. <laughs> like, he's this he's is, practicing. <laughs> 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 Just like everyone else, man. He's using like, scrims to practice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, maybe maybe if he's in so much of scrims, yeah. they'll think that he's just that bad when they, he goes on stage. Like, yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah, either that or, like, the, uh, the idea was that he wasn't trying at all. And then when he went on stage, he was actively win trading. And then the team themselves was filing a complaint. And... I guess. Why didn't they just kick him? I actually have no idea. <laughs> I, that's something I should follow up on. 
But oh, yeah. we're stuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's no way like he was getting paid that much. Like, oh no, yeah, like, yeah. At that yeah. stage in Oceania, you're probably they, not they probably could anything. just like pick up some other dude to be like, here, we'll give you a couple hundred. I bucks feel like bucks. anyone who's not actively win trading is probably better. <laughs> <laughs> so for you people out there, do the do your own homework on that one because I'm coming in with the most like generalities of the situation. So I'm probably not giving it its like rifle dues, but yeah, yeah, it's because you can see it. And there was one when it was actively when they actually came out with um, their the the stance, like the league made a stance on it and kicked them. There was a moment in the game that was so clear when he was taking a two v two ball lane. I was like, guys, like please do something about it. <laughs> so it sucks. It sucks for the players around him, of course. I, I can't imagine like having a player on your team that's just actively win trading. I um, would that would like actually like malfunction my brain. I, I, I feel happen. like it would be so obvious. That's that, what I'm saying, like, dude. Like because mm -hmm. the thing is like I'm assu I'm gonna assume he's challenger, okay? Yeah. And that, that he's not actually gold. Yeah. So like the, some of the things someone does, like you can immediately tell they're either just boosted or like trolling on purpose because like that's just not like normal for like a challenger player you yeah. know what i mean like and like in order to win trade like i feel like it would be so obvious unless like they did it in a way where it wasn't that obvious mm. but i feel like that would only work against other teams of similar scale like if your team's a lot better than another team yeah and you only slightly like int you know what i mean like you're not still not gonna lose so like he really i feel like had to run it down yeah yeah i do <laughs> I, I don't know man i i guess you could be subtle but after a certain point because like, you know, when you watch teams that aren't win training play, like, p even good players will make some really questionable plays every once in a while. But usually it's like there was some intent behind like, it. You it's can like see even why. the worst plays, you can see what they were going for. Yeah. And, like, you can kind of work out, like, what went wrong with it. But I don't know, like, <laughs> 0 24, like, yeah. <laughs> win trading scrims. At some point, it's like. <laughs> I didn't watch any of those games. Damn, fair, bro. So. Like, yeah. like <laughs> it's something you don't even know what you're doing at all. Like, it's rough. And I'll say, like, even going back to the main, like main topic, it was pretty surprising for me that Gam was able to recover the way that they did as a team. Yeah, yeah. And like, get to like the the players that they brought on to their squad um, were really green. Like the storyline was that they were really green coming in, and then by the end of like the year, we're specifically um, emo actually specifically emo on his Yone. He actually looks so damn good. Uh, individually, which for a long time I was like, I don't know if this is probably the worst like game we've seen internationally, but that was just not the case. Like mm -hmm. that was my expectation, and that wasn't true. Um, so there was a lot of surprises this world, especially in plans. Some surprises that I didn't like. <laughs> Some. Don't worry, I was also surprised <laughs> by some things. <laughs> oh my god, man! I was actually just. I remember. I would think I was on those days. I was like, please, man, please, I'm begging, just just win. Because even though people were talking about 100 Thieves being the worst kind of, like, team that North America has, like, sent internationally, th theoretically, right? But I was like, yes, true, fair, but also, they're in the easiest group. Like, their side of the group in play-ins was incredibly easy, and it's like, Rainbow Seven was supposed to be a cakewalk, even though mm -hmm. Summit was incredibly good as a player, and you can say the same with Kaney, but, like, as a team, they were really bad team fighting team and even though they stepped up we didn't <laughs> so that one was tough but as the tournament went on it was fun because um i was specifically kind of fast forwarding it FlyQuest looked really good mm -hmm. i was worried with i want to ask you this because their outset from scrims was like that they weren't going to scrim like korean and lpl teams and that they were gonna try like kind of random stuff yeah it has to be really risky to be able to say we're not going to scrim like the best teams and maybe they ended up bucking that near the end of it but i was like that has to be crazy to like not get the best possible scrims available at the time to just try and hone your strategy uh i mean i wouldn't say like it's a confirmed thing but like it's very like a lot of people think that mm -hmm. uh when the, all the like the regions they share information with each other like it's it's pretty um expected i guess of yeah. teams to think that, that they will share like obviously like i don't think teams have like proof that yeah. like it's happening but, but it's it would like, be really hard to prove yeah yeah but like sometimes like at least i've experienced like you go on stage there are some like really random bands that go against you that like are specifically targeted at you and like not a lot of people play yeah and it's like sometimes it's a bit obvious 
Um, but I definitely think like people expect other regions to share with each other. Also, like I don't know if it's a good strategy. I've never done it. Yeah. Um, but like a lot of times when you scrim the Asian teams, you sometimes you don't learn that much. Like sometimes you're learning and then sometimes you're just getting shit on so hard. There's not really a learning experience. Like when in twenty twenty three when we scrimmed T one at MSI, I wasn't learning anything. Mm -hmm. Like literally we would scrim. They would play Nidalee, they would invade me level 1, then Faker would push the first two waves of Scion level 2, then they would go bot as two people lane bottom for like three minutes straight. <laughs> uh, this is when people were like doing the Scion swap where they'd start the camps together, then dive bot with Scion. Yeah. And, then, and then like, legit like, we FF'd like four games in five minutes. Each game was like five minutes. Then four <laughs> games are done. We, we played three games and then like, I don't know, like, yeah. That that was it. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I, I've I've wondered that too, and I kind of apparently um, I was talking to I, th I think it was like Azale on the dive about it, and he was saying that apparently like that was just like FlyQuest's initial plan. That eventually, they did I think yeah. scrim okay. Eastern teams mm -hmm. later once they got there. But I when I heard that idea, I kind of liked it because I don't know. I feel like I've, we've seen so many teams that go to international competition. And, like, they might look good within our region, right? Like, they, they play with confidence and stuff. But after, like, weeks of just getting beat the fuck down in scrims every single day, like you were saying, like, you know, you play against these number one Chinese-Korean teams, and there's just no chance. Like, there was never a point where you were doing anything but getting owned. Um, like, I, I think that just makes you worse as a yeah. team. Because a lot of times when you watch these teams play internationally, too, it'll be like, they'll be in an okay game state. Like, sometimes we'll even get advantages against other teams, but it's like, you kind of forget how to win because all you've been doing is losing. Mm -hmm. And so then you'll just, like, start going for, like, random desperate stuff all the time because, like, you feel like your normal uh, strategies and stuff just are bad because they never work. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like it might actually be kind of, like, a decent strat to do that because, you know, there's the leaks thing you're talking about. Because it actually happened to C9 really badly in 2013 Worlds. Where we, because you said, you know, it's really hard to prove. Um, we, sk we scrimmed GAM like two full days before we played Fnatic. And then when we played Fnatic, they like perfectly knew highest champion pool, which which was limited at the time. Yeah. And they just like straight target banned him. Yeah. Everything he'd been practicing. And then like first picking the other thing. And we were just like, what the hell, dude? Like, how did they know? I have some information, yeah. Yeah. And, and so it, it like, it felt weird at the time, but like, I didn't think too much about it. And then like years later, uh, GAM support, or it's not uh, the Vietnam GAM, it's like Gambit. Oh, mm -hmm. Gambit. Okay. Yeah, 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 sorry, okay. sorry. Yeah. Gambit. Yeah. Um, I was confused at first, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 that was not a, <laughs> that's not a good way to refer to them. Uh, so their support, Voidal, was on our Cloud9, like European challenger team or something. Oh, right, yeah. And he just straight up told us, he's like, yeah, yeah, we, we like, we exchange all the info, yeah, okay. so like, oh we, we got we got <laughs> oh my god we, we got there, confirmation about it. <laughs> there's a proof. Yeah, exactly. So I was just like, well, that's lame. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it, I'm sure it happens all the time. I mean, I think it. I think also like it depends because like if you scrim them once, usually at least from my experience, the first time you scrim like a top uh, LPL SK team, you kind of get shit on, and then every time after it gets a bit better. Um, but like they're not always willing to scrim you after the first day like yeah like you play one day against them the games are like usually not going the greatest greatest for you and then they might not want to scrim you anymore but like yeah. i've also had experience where like we scrimmed blg at msi we were getting shit on the first couple days but then they kept scrimming us like they kept wanting to book with us because only playing teams were there mm -hmm. um and we actually were ended up like starting to go even with them um after like maybe the seventh day of scrimming them <laughs> <laughs> but like um, do you feel like it helped? Like, did you guys get better from the scrims? I, I think, yeah, I'd, we definitely yeah. got better. Like, so in those cases, like, when we were able to keep scrimming them, I felt like we were actually improving. We still got 3 out on stage, but, like, we mm -hmm. had a lot of confidence that we could beat them because we were going pretty even versus them in scrims, uh, and we were getting shit on in the beginning. Um, but I think for FlyQuest, like, it could also benefit them a lot because they play a lot of, like, unique champs i would yeah. say and like i mean you could see it in that one Doran clip where like he literally didn't know what nudu was doing like nudu starts missed TP snowball he starts his... tp he's like what the fuck i got canceled by nudu -y? like <laughs> that was actually so insane to see like oh <laughs> like God. stuff like that is like because they play different champs like uh nunu fiddle like urgot seraphine like stuff like that like that the asian teams probably don't see at all in scrims um yeah. 
it would probably benefit them more than a team like, I guess, TL, who just plays very standard stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, uh, like, this was a pretty different world, too, because not only, you know, you have those kind of question marks, but also, dude, the rank reset happened right before Worlds actually started. Like, I think it was main stage started or something like that. And all of the huge changes, like, for instance, Cassante was a pretty big, impactful champion during plans and, and Swiss stage. And he got, like, a ridiculous rework, essentially. Same play style, but also, like, different way of using your W and just, like, stats entirely. So I was like, how the hell do people, other than uh, using scrims and in-houses, actually, like, practice their champion when they're at an international event, like, comfortably? Because most of the time, you want to play as much as possible. Yeah. Like, you want to just grind as much games as you can. So it made it at least people getting on top of the meta at the very beginning feel like it was like a lot slower of a process. You got to see teams that are coming in with completely different mentalities of what the meta actually was. At first it was like, yeah, we're playing Syndra, Ori, Mages. Then the Chinese and Korean teams came in. You're like, actually, we're still playing a lot of the old stuff. We still think Rumble is still good even after the nerfs. Um, uh, like alongside like Smolder and everything, you, and people started to realize a lot of the changes didn't impact it too heavily like they were still too good still really good um and the meta just became about yone versus smolder for the most part <laughs> uh but i i thought it was interesting from the aspect of you were just seeing a lot of champion diversity because yeah. teams didn't really know what the meta actually was yeah um but then also i'm sure it was frustrating for the teams because you can't really practice that i mean that that happened a lot uh in general because there's so much time at uh, world specifically because yeah. there's so much time before you, your first match and like things obviously work differently in scrims than on stage yeah um so like meta always shifts at worlds uh pretty heavily i would say even like what's it called even though it's on the same patch uh and you just kind of have to adapt and sure. then the meta is just like what people find the strongest right like the meta will shift easily because if someone finds a counter so let's say let's say Yon first pick right now yeah. or Aurora they're looking broken right yeah. no one's really found a counter to them but like I guess Genji did with Smolder and then some other teams yeah uh, against Yon but like if you can't find a counter then they're just OP and then a lot of times they will find a counter and then maybe you can't first pick it anymore you yeah know? it's just how yeah. it works dude I I feel like the meta for this world's has I I don't remember a time where champions went through so often with such insane win rates like yone and skarner yeah primarily yeah. like aurora's win rate's really high too right it was I'm pretty high sure. but i don't remember what it is right now i'm gonna be honest i to me she seems a little overrated like like maybe it's a hot take mm -hmm. but I, I she's been like perma in most games like she, nobody she's, even, the, she's like, the most banned champ i saw uh i think someone posted the stats of the most banned champ for the lol the crystal ball stuff but yeah. i think she's the most banned champ i mean she she's um at least from when I was screaming, Aurora is very different now. She's nerfed a lot since when she first came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but like her laning, she doesn't feel seem that oppressive. But it's just like I don't know. Her ult is like so broken. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Like if you want to play champs like a Jin or MF first Aurora, like okay, just, I feel like you shouldn't be playing those champs. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I, I agree. But like in general, like even yeah, like yeah. Callista, for example, you have your whole kit is about hopping. If if you're like. Camille ulted basically. Yeah, yeah. true. Just, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I could I could totally be wrong about that, but that's just kind of been my impression of her compared to like yeah. some of the other stuff. Like, I think the Skarner one's crazy, dude. Like, Skarner's OP. Yeah, like, Skarner's OP. No jungler into Skarner looks close, right? Yeah. It's like I I if I was jungling and that champ existed in that form, I like I, there was no trade I'd be comfortable for. I'd just be like. You know, okay, I guess I guess we lose. GG's. <laughs> it's actually insane. Like just watching some of the games at Worlds, and even though like there's a lot of diversity at the beginning, like watching Skarner just be completely oppressive, deal an insane amount of damage once you get hard steel. And also it's also being tanky as well. Yeah. yeah. And also <laughs> completely counters any level of engage. Like if you're playing Nautilus, like um Leona, Leona's a little dis like um kind of you don't have to commit to your engage, you can just throw out your ulti. But like Anytime you walk in, Skarner's like, hey, if you engage on me, I literally have ulti. Like, like, <laughs> you are not going to win this engage. Also, I feel like Skarner's, like, I would say more new. And, like, a lot of people just don't really know how to play against as much. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's also affecting it a lot. Like, for example, the two times I remember, but, like, Masu against Peanut just, like, walks into his ult at the top tower. Yeah. Just gets ulted with flash up. Then Paze does the same thing, like, yesterday. Like, they yeah. just, like, literally just walk into Skarner ult get ulted and it's like 
of course it's gonna be fucking OP. Like if it can ult the AD carry, yeah. You know? And I feel like that happens a Dude, lot. Dude, the one that has surprised me is I swear we've seen so many mid laners die to like a level three or four Skarner gank yeah, from top just side, the wall. just getting <laughs> slammed into the Raptor wall, and it's just like when you watch it, it looks so bronze. It's like. How are you getting hit by this? And then but you're just like, wow, Scar is so so broken. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Scar, Scar is broken. I'm not trying to say it's not broken. Yeah. But yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of times the kits, like, maybe it's not understood as well. Or, like, maybe there's no counterplay. I don't know. But um, I feel like definitely it being a newer champ is making him more broken. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely. for sure the case. Like, Smolder is still a champion. Like, I hate probably the most in terms of design because it is literally just a consistent DPS AD carry that has infinite scaling. And and so like for instance, when you're picking it into like Yone or something, it does well into Yone and lane. Like so you're just winning lane a lot of the times and you're able to get and if you have a team that's, you know, patient enough to be able to like play through sides effectively, get items on him and just wait on it. We've seen so many games, especially in Swiss, there are a lot of games where teams like G2 is willing to play pay, uh, play Yone into it. And it was like, oh, we actually cannot front to back team fight anymore. It's like it's just simply not possible. Yeah. Um, and I just I don't like that design at all. Don't think anyone does. So it's not like it's a hot take or anything. But um, it's just <laughs> so just being able to see games of Smolder and the rights of the best teams in the world, and then seeing Skarner with the rest best teams in the world, you just see how br like incredibly broken they are. And you're like, please just. It shouldn't have. It should have been nerfed prior to it, or not. <laughs> or, or, uh, but please ban it. I'm begging. I'm begging. And then teams just let it through, or is willing to play against it, and it just makes me sad every time. So. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think uh, for finals? Who you got? Um, for me, I think BLG is gonna win. Uh, really? Yeah, because I had, um, I had BLG winning before the tournament started. Okay. I had them winning my crystal ball. And uh, I'm just going to stick to my feeling from the beginning of the tournament. Sun cost fallacy. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. Um, but I think that uh, I think that Elk and Bin are looking insane. And uh, I don't know. I just, I just think they're going to win. I don't really have, like, I think all of T1 is also looking insane. Doing yeah. it wrong. Knight is also looking. Like, everyone on BLG is playing well. Um, but I don't know. I just I just think BLG is going to win. Dude, it's at, and that's probably at this point the most fair level of analysis you can get. Because like anytime <laughs> I have any level of reasoning of why a team should win or win by a large margin, I'm just wrong. And I've probably doubted T1 the most. I mean, everyone obviously everyone's been doubting T1 since coming into Worlds because they're fourth seed, struggled to get there, uh, was pretty rough during the AD carry meta. And then when they were facing teams that I thought were better, I thought top esports were better. Hell, they just weren't. Yeah. <laughs> like, we all thought Gen G were better. They were literally like winning champion after champion, even though like Hanwha Life won this split. Um, they were and deemed as the best team in the world. They they were our MSI champions, and I thought they were well rounded. MSI Finals MVP was Lehens, and I was like, this team's looking pretty damn good. Lehens may have nope. ran it down. <laughs> so I was like, no, no. Um, so I think T1 Wake takes it. Um, I think it's three one. Because I think there will probably be one game where, like, Ben or Elk has, like, just takes over. And um, I'm pretty confident with everyone's individual abilities. But I think T1's probably just the most consistent, hilariously enough, right now. Um, the one question I had was just BLG with Shun. Because Shun came in, um, of course, during Worlds. And, like, he hadn't played since, I guess, during the summer split when he was when they played against, like, LNG and J they went yeah, to JDG. Yeah, he got, he got benched really early on. Yeah. I think even before. He didn't play a single game in playoffs, I think. Which is crazy. I thought the circumstances of his benching for me was surprising because, like, he was well-regarded, of course, like, was an incredibly talented, skilled player. And then they brought in Wei, who, of course, has, like, MSI accolades, but was on an RNG team where, his, like, he wasn't performing. And I, I know it's hard to perform under those circumstances, but that was the case. But they brought him in. I was like, okay, they look better. And now you're bringing in Sun. And even if you are, like, the sixth man and you're watching scrims and you're watching everything, like, being implemented back into a team is always going to be hard to me. Like, I don't know if you were in that position before or you've seen that happen with other teams and you, that are, like, players that are br being brought back in, but they've been a part of scrims and everything. That's not an easy process, I'm assuming. I mean... I have no idea what's happening there, but yeah. I've scrimmed LPL and LCK teams who yeah. have six mans before, and uh, I personally believe that Shun was scrimming the whole time. Okay. Um, like I don't I think, think they said that in interviews. Yeah, they were like, still I, time. I, I highly okay. doubt 
that Wei was just screaming the whole time, and then they were just like, uh, yeah, we're one two now. Uh, Wei, you're gone. Jun, yeah. you start screaming. Fair. We're gonna we're gonna sub you in now. Fair. Um, but like in general, the Asian teams when they have six mans, like actual six mans, not just like a. I bring you because I have to to yep. the international event. The reckless six man. Wait, <laughs> yeah. yeah. you don't think reckless is really <laughs> <scrims? laughs> my coming? At least give him a world skin, right? One game just, just to give him a world skin. If they're up two zero, just bring him in. Like, <laughs> yeah. God, that would something. be awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, generally their six man actually scrims even if they never see stage time. Mm -hmm. um, if they're actually planning on on using him at some point. Yeah. Um, so I assume that Jun was screaming the whole time. Also, he's. It's not like he's like way in this situation where he comes in from RNG. He's True. been with the same players for like two or three years now, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so he probably has good synergy with them already. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like he slotted in perfectly he slotted fine. In really perfectly yeah. fine. Because yeah. I always have like some questions. Because like, especially with when the lane swap meta just became a big deal, um, and team, you know, playing differently with way. I'm sure he's like. Yeah, as you mentioned, if he's playing scrims and he's still taking those lessons in. But I never really feel like teams that have had like a 10-man roster or a 6-man roster, even if it's rotating and they've been comfortable with that rotating, that you're 100% locked in. Because like in scrims, a lot of the times you're going to have disagreements. And sometimes those disagreements are going to be um, unresolved. Like they're just going to exist, right? And it's going to take a long time to be able to re like resolve those problems when two players are going to have problems with like, you know, a jungler wanting to full clear and like get his... Um, get to a break point that he's comfortable with, but the lanes are obviously going to drag him around or want to drag him around. So it's like, those are unresolved. Then you bring him back in without having all the scrim time with him. So like, those are the questions that I had in mind. Um, even with that being said, I just think T1's better. And it's crazy, man. They got plot armor. I mean, they got that uh, armor. Plot armor is big. Yeah. Plot armor is big. I don't know, dude. I think betting against T1 is just so cap. Like, my my favorite narrative from this world is T1 being underdogs because like <laughs> granted they looked bad in summer like it was yeah. so stressful watching it them was, try yeah. to qualify for worlds they're just like losing every single game that like they're getting to game 5 every series and then just losing and like I, I kept thinking they were eliminated. I didn't realize how many chances they had. Yeah. And so I was like getting really <laughs> depressed. And then and then they made it. And now they're just like on this insane glow up. Like it, it's it's so wild. I feel actually. like the whole team just plays so well. I mean, I focus more on owner because he's yeah. the jungler, but like yeah. I feel like at Worlds owner the last two years has been like playing a lot like way better than he does. Dude, he's like regionally. He's yeah. like the only jungler making Vi not look horrible. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> I swear, I don't think Vi's very good. Like yeah. like I would not want to play her if I was playing for right now, but owner actually pops off on yeah. her every game. I don't know. In the Gen G series, he was like one B two in the back line as Vi. Yeah. Like and then there was one time I think he ended up getting an um a Vi ulti into the red side jungle and like he's surrounded because they drag him over to the like over into the pit. And he like Flashes into a wall, re-engages. Like he's playing incredibly well mm -hmm. in all of these fights, um, and it's it's crazy to see. You're right. I, I, it's funny because it has to be an, a level of when it matters, when the pressure is there, when you actually like fully are invested that you're playing better. Um, sure, they were struggling domestically, so it's not as if they were like a G2 winning every championship and then like already knowing that they're getting to get an international. But you've won, like. Uh, you've been to World's Finals twice, twice already. You've won, like, multiple championships. Um, there has to have been some level of, you know, confidence that you'll get there so they're not playing as well as they could be. I don't know what it is, but the the level up they've, they've had since the boot camp in Worlds has been ridiculous, yeah. and I don't know what, to, what it amounts to. I, mean, I think it's also just a lot to do with their balling, I think. Mm -hmm. um, like... Versus Gen G, they're drawing three bands, like, uh, and they are figuring out their own like range support slash pike meta, and I think that their ball lane <laughs> winning is, with like, pike is yeah. so crazy. I, th I think their ball lane is like super good when they get to play like those really strong laners, yeah, like oppressive range ma champs, like compared to like when they're forced to play like Alistar versus Nautilus matchups. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this world's and last world's they've kind of done that, where like they just. Pick Renata, Astronauta blind. I think yeah. they did that last Worlds too. They just pick Callista Nico. They pick like Pike. They blind pick Caitlyn, which no one else is doing. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know if they're blind pick Caitlyn, but they want to Caitlyn. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think that they just come to Worlds. Their balling starts picking really aggressive bot matchups, and then I don't know. It just works out really well for them. Obviously, they're both like really 
good at laning and playing yeah. those champs. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with their success as well. And yeah, yeah. I, I think that I, I totally agree. That's, I feel like it comes from their bot lane, but also it seems like they use their bot lane prior to like help the rest of the map yeah. instead of actually trying to dominate the other bot lane. Like yeah. they so much of the time they just get bot ahead and then carry just pieces out and yeah. he's just like, you know, surfing the map. Like, yeah, he ganks for Faker. I feel like Carrier lands with Faker more than Guma. Actually, like <laughs> watching his games, especially on Pike, dude, he's just always sitting by Faker. It's I mean, so funny. That, that's Pike's job. You gotta roam, like. Gotta yeah, but he's not roaming. Yeah. He's laying with Faker. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he was finding he was finding Angle's top lane too. He was literally yeah. just um, in everyone's lane, and that's great. I, I do think there's also like Faker's laning much better. That was probably the biggest point of criticism all split long, um, and also. Zeus is not, just not inting on sides as much as he was prior. Like that was probably. I mean, the they biggest. were. They were. I swear, they were all just inting. Like, yeah. During s summer, it I, it wasn't just like one person. I felt like every time I watched, someone was just fucking inting. I don't know. Like, <laughs> uh, they just stopped doing that. They were like, "Oh, it's world's time. Let's just uh, let's just start playing well again." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're flying out. Time to <laughs> time to <laughs> actually get better on this. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like that. Limping dog gif where he like gets up and just walks away normally. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, switching gears a little bit, um, LCS going through some big changes next year. Mm -hmm. I don't. Like, it's not going to be called LCS anymore, right? It's the yeah. Americas League. Americas, I think, right? yeah. America's League. Mm -hmm. And where's the North American League and the, the South American? Yeah. League? yeah, they haven't they haven't given up too much details at all on that one, so we don't know what it would be called. But I'm imagining it's like North to South or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I feel like I I'm mean, still going to call it LCS be. for a while. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna still call it LCS for a while, no matter what they decide to call it. But is it gonna be like the Twitter versus X? But then, thing? but then, what are you gonna say about like the? Because there's gonna be one Latin America team. You're just gonna be like, it's LCS with the Latin America team. Yeah, yeah. and, and a guess, yeah. LCS and friends. <laughs> <laughs> I like that okay. rebranding. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you guys have any like strong feelings about it or anything? There's the, I guess, rumors of the first split being fearless. Hmm. What do you think about that? Well, like, Wait, as long is the rumor that's is it going to be best of one or best of three? Do we know? We don't know. We don't. We don't know. Yeah, we, we have know. no idea. We're okay. we're operating with so little information, and if okay. it is fearless, then I feel I think you know fearless is a little gimmicky personally, um, but I'm still kind of unresolved in how I feel about it. Few reasons, because if it's just regular fearless, then you're still going to get the same meta, same draft. A lot of the times, people expect crazy picks when you get fearless draft, but in a best of three. Um, you're not getting that at all. You're you're maybe getting like let's let's talk about mid lane. Oh yeah, it's got to be best of three. There's no way it's a fearless best of one. Yeah, Every best of one is a fearless draft. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, so it's like for best of three, you're like, but for the most part, you're like, okay. So we're, if the guy is a control mage player mid, he's playing Azir, he's playing Huey or Syndra or something. That's not gonna make people feel excited. Uh, it's best of fi fives that usually get the crazy drafts. Yeah. Um. So that's usually when fearless gets something interesting out of it. So that's when it's fun. But then I've seen best of fives for Fearless in NACL. And I don't know if when I watch that broadcast, I'm confused as hell anytime I watch Fearless. Because it's usually like there are no bans because you're already getting four of the last drafts banned. Yeah. You have four drafts like on the screen. So if you're trying to figure out what is actually available as a viewer, you have no damn idea. Like you're just like ping ponging between <laughs> both sides. You're like, it, what about Vi? Oh, 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 no, no Vi. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Let's check it out. Like, it's banned, it's banned. Like, it's banned, it's making yeah, sure. Yeah, the, the draft's for sure hard to follow, but mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I, I feel it's like fun. most people don't follow the draft that much anyway. Like, they yeah. just they just, just want to watch the game. That's true. Yeah. Unless, unless there's an actual interesting champ, like, I don't know, someone picks Teemo or something. Like, true. unless yeah. something actually interesting comes, like, no one really cares. If you're mid laners playing Azir, Akali, Syndra, Silas, yeah. like, anything normal, they. I feel like they don't care about Yeah, it I mean, the, the lock-ins, I think, are interesting, but I'm just saying, like, the average viewer, I don't think the fearless format of, like, trying to figure out what they're going to play being so confusing. Oh, they don't think yeah, about like, that. Yeah. I, I think it does, like, some people care about it, but I don't think the, most people do. I think yeah. most people, just, whatever. Where fearless does help is if you just don't want to see the champions, like, Corky and Tristana being traded. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, Dude, if you just don't want to see that, which happened all split along, yeah, yeah. then that's where it's helpful. I... I I'm kind of on the flip side where I like Fearless, and I even think, you know, there's probably space to do more stuff like that because to me what makes a, a really good team and players is seeing how people can adapt to different situations, right? Because League is a game with so much history. There's so many champions, so many different ways to play that 
when you get a meta like we had this year, which in my mind is going down as like one of the like more boring metas. Yeah. Like I don't think it's ardent sensor level. Like yeah. I don't think anything will top that. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> hopefully nothing's worse than that. Yeah. But it's kind of up there as far as, you know, it was like 80 carries, rushing tank boots, and lane swaps yeah. every single game. And it's like th it, the first 15 minutes of most games was just so mind-numbingly boring. It's like yeah. there's sometimes 3v1 tower dives that are like kind of interesting. You know, there's some strategy with lane swaps, but at the end of the day, it's like not what you're seeing in solo queue. And it's it, I don't feel like it's really testing these players against each other when it's just like, hey, Corky versus Trist again. Hope you haven't played this matchup 200 times Yeah, kind of deal. Yeah. And so... I think stuff like Fearless, where you can kind of like take people out of their comfort zones and just give more novel experiences to the viewers, because I feel like, you know, you want to have a good spectating experience, right? It's like it's an esport. You, it, it does matter. Like if if something's boring as hell for the audience, like yeah, the, I don't think that's good. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think that uh, Fearless itself. Uh, also, I don't know what style of Fearless is. Is it like you can't play all ten champs, or you can't well, just play, you can't play the champs you play? I feel like it's got to be the, the, the all, all ten. ten. Right? Yeah. If it's only your one, then it's just like you just you flip swap swamps. again. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that's not good. But he, yeah, Google, you go. Um, I think the biggest thing it'll do is just like make it so teams will will be able to win without like when they need to ban more than three champs. Mm -hmm. Like I think most teams or most players will still be in their coverage zone because as a pro player like you can play probably like 10 to 15 champs you're comfortable with right like they might all be meta champs but like you're comfortable on them and it's yeah. like um i think like a lot of situations you end up the reason you end up with trades like corky tristan is because you don't have space to ban both for example let's say you need to ban aurora and yon because uh your mid laner can't play yon yeah. So then you can't give Aurora, right? And the enemy team knows you that. So then now you have to ban both. But then now it becomes Corey Tristana, and then you can't ban both, right? Yeah. Now yep. after it's played one game, you you don't have to like you're saying see it again because you don't need to ban it, and then it'll help you with your draft. For like, um, if you suck at Corey Tristana matchup, and you suck at another matchup. Now both of those are gone because you ban one, the other one's gone, and now you can kind of draft comfortably, what you're good at, I guess. Yeah. Um. So it'll help you in the long run, whereas like. Sometimes teams that have weaknesses like that just end up having to just play the matchup twice. And then everyone's like, why would they opt into this? They can't play this, you know? And then, yeah, it goes to shit. Yeah. So, like, if, if that is the idea, then that'll be, I think that'll be fun. But other than that, I mean, like, the expectation of, like, one LLA team, which in my mind is almost always going to be, like, not that good because I think they have to put, pick from their, their pool of LLA players for the most part. I'm not sure. I mean, they just beat 100 Thieves or Third Seed, so. That I, is true, yeah, I, fair I, enough, I, I fair don't know, enough. Like, fair enough. I don't know. That's my expectation. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, but, like, that was my thought process. Then there's the guest team, so um, not sure. Oh, yeah, do you guys know who the guest team is? I I don't even know who the guest or the LLA team is. Like, I have no idea. Has ever? Yeah. I heard some rumors. I've heard some rumors. But well. I don't think it's confirmed yet. Yeah. I probably shouldn't speak. Say, say, uh, I yeah, say, yeah. I ain't saying anything with that one. But, yeah. But, like, so... It's it'll make the interest the league more interesting almost mm -hmm. certainly because you'll have a lot more uh, Latin American fans who are going to be rooting for their players yeah and also there's going to be like a grass like a grassroot movement for uh, whichever the guest team is going to be so like that's gonna be more interesting I'm sure um, for me I've always just wanted more than anything to have ten teams because the feeling is that I think there are a lot of good players that are out there. And they're kind of on the outside looking in. That I think if they add two more teams, it's still they're going to still be competitive. It really just depends on the how they build around that team. Um, but just having two less teams, generally speaking, like I know we've had like already like a year of this all now, but it definitely makes the league more competitive. If and especially if you have more players within the system. Um, Wait, having, so you think having ten teams makes it more competitive than eight teams? I think so. It like it. It wouldn't if there aren't the talent available. Like, if you don't have the players that are available or the organization that you think can uh, fill that spot and be competitive, then yes. But I do think that there are, are pretty good players um, that are on the outside looking in that can make a, like a competitive roster. Um, so that's my thought process. I do think Tier 2, um, like, for instance, there are a few players like UG and Surti and... Um, those are like two quick examples that I think if they get a team that they can perform well in an LCS level. Um, but I also think that there are LCS players that are kind of 
trying to like fight to get their spot back or something that I think if they're on a solid team they could perform well. So that's where I think that they would it would make the league more competitive, but that's a big if because if you have like an organization that can't scout properly, that isn't funded at all and paying like minimum and you know they don't care and you can actively tell, then it's doomed. Then you're just having a less competitive league. Yeah, I, I feel that. So one idea I've I've had kind of had that I don't know how you would implement it too well, but mm. I think it would be cool. And um a lot of people I brought it up to don't like it. So let me see what you guys okay. think. It's um I think it'd be cool if there was more opportunities for like the top tier two teams to play against the lower LCS teams because Agreed. you know, we used to have that in like the relegation, right? For which was actually for a spot, but more so than that is like, you know, when you only see LCS, the bottom LCS team is generally just getting ran through, right? Like losing to everybody. But at the same time, like they are pro players. They're not objectively bad at the game. Most of them are probably all challenger in solo queue. So having <laughs> some kind so, yeah. of crossover where it's like, huh? I said, I'd hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? It's like they're having some opportunity to like, if they play against the top tier two teams to show, you know, okay, we might not be as good as the, these other LCS teams, but we're at least like good enough to be here, yeah. right? Yeah. And then it would also give the tier two teams a chance to be like, okay, like you're you're the best uh, tier two team, great, nobody cares. Yeah. Um, but if you're like, okay, we're the best tier two team and we're beating LCS teams, yeah. I think that kind of thing could be interesting for like both sides. Completely agree. That's what I wanted Lockin to be personally. Yeah. I wanted Lockin to be a, like a Demacia Cup where it was not only just the LCS teams, it was the play-in teams and oh, play-in teams. It was the <laughs> tier two teams and that they can actually play against the LCS teams um, you know you can play against the best you can play against like the worst LCS teams and you can make it very clear to fans and managers and other players that like I'm actually good uh, Demacia Cup was actually really good for that because for instance there was one um, like historic c match I don't remember what tier 3 team it was in um, China but they went up against Snake and it was like Puff and Southwind completely beat Snake Esports, which is crazy at that time. Yeah. And they knocked them out of the Masia Cup. And everyone was going crazy about it. <laughs> Snake just had like a fit internally. They yeah. were just like, they were like, what we're now we're doubling down. <laughs> <laughs> like we're triple like we're scrimming like nonstop. Like we cannot lose to teams like this. But it gave an opportunity for those players that performed well in that series, like Puff and Southwind, to then get an LPL spot. Yeah. Because they like they were in tier two or tier three at that time for quite a bit. Like but people are always like, well, yeah, but can they make it at like that level? It would do a lot of good work, and it would give like some opportunities to the point that you're making about like the challenging whether it can make the league more competitive. If there was like two guest spots, um, so the promotion relegation system was a little bit more active, that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, and so we get to see players like XU and like. Even though I'm like sad revenge, you know, tired or chime retired and all those players are moving on. And that's because like the <laughs> scene is shrinking a little bit. But like if you could see players who are performing well in tier two able to then compete for a slot, because my fear is that if that one guest spot is actually good. Yeah. <laughs> then <laughs> where's the path to pro guys? Like the fourth <laughs> best team or fifth best team is now the only team that can get relegated. Yeah. That's kind of the fear. I, I, so more open like an, an opening for promotion relegation would be cool. All right. Now we're going to play a game where we each are going to try to come up with our own custom champion by taking one ability from any champion, right? So we can have like any passive, any Q, W, E, R, and uh, we're going to do that, and then we're going to compare and see who's is the best. Okay. I like this. I'm just making the most broken champion in the game. And as you were making that explanation, I already thought of one, so. Okay. Like... Are we saying it actively while we're doing this? Like, which ability? Or are we doing the reveal? No, you're just running it down. Okay, and okay. Running it down. All right, this is... You better not be cheating off me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know what my E would be. I actually don't know what my E would be. What is a good E? I don't know what passive to take. I'm really coming up with some aids, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming up with some... Pu <laughs> All right, I think I've got mine sorted. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. I've got ready. mine. Okay. Right. Who goes first? You want to go first? first. Like, I broke the fucking board. <laughs> How is it possible? <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> I'm too fucking struggling. Whatever. This thing's going on the ground. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's where it goes. All right. So for, for my champ, 
I'm thinking when I'm looking at the list, I'm thinking, what's the most bullshit ability in the whole game? Okay. Yes. So Wait, that's, who, that's how I started it. Who's your champ? Oh, it doesn't matter. Because oh. my, my W is Yumi. Oh, you're Yumi, okay. So they're going to attach, <laughs> yep. naturally. <laughs> I gave them Morgana's E for Black Shield. Okay. Because so, they're just going to be like the, the, mo the most obnoxious enchanter. R is Zillion, okay. naturally. Uh, for Q and passive, those were the ones I was least sure about. So I just said Fiddlesticks for Q because it's like, a, you know, I targeted like 2.25 second fear, which is, I don't think anybody likes. And then for passive, I said Eve because ideally you, you go stealth and your guy you're attached to also stealths. Oh my God. I think your champion actually sucks. You know, you can't. I mean, I don't think it's good, but it's, it's no, really you, obnoxious. You can't use any of your spells inside him. You have to get out. No, you can use them all. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. <laughs> no, you cannot. Yeah, it's no, my champion. I don't know if that's yeah, possible. You can. No, you I don't can. know if that's possible. Yeah, you can. can. No. What's your Q? Fiddle. Like, you know you know the, the spells, Yumi's Q and E? It says, there's a second part of it that says when attached. It does yeah, this. these are all going to have that too. Why? <laughs> Why? No, you're just stealing what? the spell from it. No, you're not. No, that you're is not function. No, that is not function. All right, all right, let's see yours then. Okay, <laughs> I'll do mine next. So I'll handshake with you. I got the Yumi ability, Yumi W. Okay. So handshake on the Yumi W. Okay. We've got that one. Wait, dude, you're go. just gonna be the same thing. Blitzcrank <laughs> Q. So there's the idea of your Blitzcrank queuing into the Yumi W okay. or Kang E. Like you just can, you are not targetable as a okay. champion. And then Echo Ulti only because maybe you can come out with a Blitz Q and then Echo Ulti back to where you came from or Blitz Q W back to your the to a champion from your team. I just want the biggest amount of bullshit possible, and I want every ability to go into each other. Passive was the toughest one, so I just thought of a, a random passive that might work, or in passives. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, so you guys are going for, for the, like, uh, annoying champ. Yes. Like, yeah. The most annoying thing possible. Okay. Okay, I my champ is Caitlyn, so she has 650 range. Yeah. And then her passive will be Callista. Okay. So she, when she hits, she hops around. I need wave clear, so I took Kalia Q, because champ, champs without wave clear suck. Yeah. So you need wave clear. Okay. okay. Then I have Vayne W, because I'm gonna be hopping around like Callista. Yeah. Put on Caitlyn, so I'll be hitting them a lot with Master Yi alt. So I'll be hitting them a lot with Vayne W. <laughs> okay. And then I have Bravi, so that if someone goes on me, I'm fine. Okay. Oh. You're kind of cooking. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's my champ. That's pretty good. Okay. I feel like Talia Q is gonna be useless because you're building AD. So what the hell is that Talia Q That's actually going to do? That's fucking... Dude, I should have taken a different Q. Like, <laughs> that, I should have taken, like, Nocturne Q or something. I need Wave Clear. Oh, true. That would have been good. But yeah, I, I think the most obnoxious part about it is uh, the Yi ulti, just because if you get exhausted or anything like that, you're just gone. No, because you're just basically Callista passive. The faster you attack, the faster you attack, the more you hop, right? So yeah. You take Yi ult, you attack super fucking fast, you hop in, like, a million times and then it's like you're, you have lethal tempo and then you put Brahmi when they go on you you know i think it could be pretty solid and it's pretty good yeah, it's pretty yeah. good not bad i think we will all agree on though your champion sucks that actually it just does your not champ is the same <laughs> thing <laughs> as his no Mine's it's not i have better. a blitz crank cue Yours like, trash. everything works with my blitz cue i'm just okay, a imagine better my blitz champion crank. That's... on blabbers <laughs> cc immunity revive <laughs> Targeted CC stealth. Like, what What more okay, do you I, want? I, I will say, I think your guys' champ is better than mine if... Okay, you're, I think yours sucks. Yours what? Sucks. <laughs> what? Like, what? There's no synergy. Mine is ultimate synergy. Dude, there's no synergy. You're just bringing the Blitzcrank Q for closer and closer to your team, and if you're ever engaged on, you're just Kane eating through walls. I think that... I mean, the Kane E is the one that sucks probably the most, because you can't really actively use that with any other ability. But, like, that's a pretty damn good support, I think. But there's no way, like, you're going to press Kaney, and then your your guy you're on <laughs> is going through the fucking wall. <laughs> yeah, that one's not working. <laughs> that one's not working together. I'm just thinking it's just foolproof. If you're ever engaged on, you're Wing back to your teammate or you're Echo Ulting away. And maybe you can use Blitzcrank But no one engages that. on you when you're Yumi. Like, think about it. You're always inside someone. That's true. It's only for the gimmick. The gimmick, I think, is the, is the entire takeaway here. Okay. I like the fact that you tied a champion to it so it had range. I know we discussed that earlier. My pea brain just didn't think about it, so I only went to the passive on that one. So it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, if your guys' abilities work on the guy you're attached to, I will say that your champs are very OP. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I'm glad you agree, actually. I'm glad, but, <laughs> I'm glad but you I don't agree. Think, I don't think 
that, uh, that's that's like screen Q move with your mouse. Yeah, like, like that's what I'm thinking. Like, what, like, is your ADC queuing or are you queuing? Like, who's queuing? Uh, look, all I'm saying is that when you're Kane eing through a wall, you can press abilities. K E through a wall. If you grab <laughs> someone, do they become attached too? <laughs> <laughs> you're just a part. You're a part of the champion. Actually, oh my god, I remember there was a Yumi bug that I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, Kirei or something posted it on Twitter. This was a while back when when Yumi was a was a champion. They're like, K like Viego couldn't use abilities from the point of the game because like something had happened. Dude, Viego with... is still bugged now. Like when he kills someone, yeah, you, can't, you don't see the gold. It's so annoying. I think it was. Oh, I think it was Viego stealing Yumi, like in uh, taking Yumi, and then there was a bug about turning back and then not being able to use your abilities for the rest of the game or something. Okay. That one was fun. Wait, what is what was the bug that you mentioned? I mean, currently Viego, when he kills someone, you, I mean, I don't know if they fixed it on the new patch. Yeah. But like when Viego kills someone, the gold doesn't pop up over their head. I mean, it's just, it's, it's it doesn't really matter. But yeah, like, I like to see my gold when I kill them. You, know? <laughs> you like, want the dopamine? Yeah, you're, miss, you're missing out on the I'm dopamine. I'm missing out, bro. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All, right. All right. Okay. I'm glad we agree that our champion's better. I, his is better than yours. It it works. How does okay? I would love to see people actually reacting to this. Yeah. I'm reading the comments to this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading the comments. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Have you seen her? Uh, like how the champion? Is it guy, girl? Her. And Bessa? Yeah. yeah, she's she's, an arcane. she's from Arcane. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. So they're releasing her because Ar Arcane's getting released, basically. It's Pretty like sure. A, I think. Yeah. 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 One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Wait, you saw the first season, right? I saw the first season. I haven't seen a Bessa at all. I mean, okay, I saw some clips. But like, I don't know what her spells do. I just know when she casts abilities, she dashes. Yeah. yeah. Like, basically, every ability I saw that she casted, she dashed. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I actually went in for a playtest on Ambessa, like, a uh, couple months ago. And, yeah, she looks really broken. It was kind of my, my initial impression. Um, she's kind of reminds me of, like, a Silas Riven type champ where yeah, that's what i was thinking yeah i mean she's meant to be they call her like an outfighter where your ideal range is just slightly outside of melee range so you have like a sweet spot on your queue mm -hmm. and a bunch of stuff um and then yeah she's just insanely mobile like every ability you use lets you dash afterwards even if you don't hit anyone yeah so i th i mean she just seems like one of those champs that like if she's tuned in a way where she can like do what she wants to do, yeah. I, I feel like you're not gonna have fun playing against it at all. Um, her weaknesses are meant to be like, you know, I don't think she's meant to like, be crazy good late game unless she's really ahead, like yeah. like a lot of bruisers. And then um, she doesn't really have hard CC, like it's just her all, yeah. which is like, like a, a one second stun on one person. Looking at her, my initial thoughts are that she's just gonna be a stat check champ. Yeah. If her stats are bad, she's gonna be useless, uh, in my opinion, because she has no CC. Any champs without CC have to have either like either be long ranged like an AD carry or uh, have to be completely broken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I mean obviously there's exceptions, but like generally I think that. And then I don't know how Ambessa is getting on a carry in the, or how tanky she'll be. Like I don't know how she's gonna reach backline or. Yeah, I mean her main uh, engage tool is the yeah. ult. It's yeah. like I haven't seen her ult actually. Maybe it, that's it's why. basically like Yone's ult, but a little. It's skinnier and longer range than Yone's ult, and it only dashes if you hit someone. Okay, so she's not, she's not a tank. She's a bruiser. Right? She's yeah. a fighter. Yeah, yeah okay. she she's like not actually very tanky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I think the most annoying thing about her. You're right. I feel like she's like a stat check champion. Yeah. Um, perhaps her early game is gonna be weak because it seems like a lot of her cooldowns are like ten seconds plus, but she has like two parters for her spells. Uh, the most annoying thing, because when I was going through the champion on stream, I was like, oh, so when you get six, you have random pen. So you actually get pen, 20% armor pen on your ulti. Oh, really? Not, not I, on I the ulti that. specifically. It's for your abilities. It's like Darius E, basically. Yeah, okay. So activating ult now ha gives you pen. It's like it's a scaling pen. So it's like 10 to... Oh, activating it? So you ha it's not a passive. It's active. It's a passive. It's a passive. I should have oh, said that. Okay, I okay. It's a passive. Yeah, I think it's the same thing Pantheon has. Oh, okay, yeah. That's exactly. Good. That's pretty good, yeah. So you have that and Omnivamp. That's embedded in your I champion. mean, she sounds like she'll be good against tanks then. Yeah. Yeah. I, then, I think that's meant to be... Yeah. She's then, meant to be like a good 1v1 champ. Yeah, and then depending on her stats, she's probably like a top laner that can stat check a lot of melees. Mm -hmm. If she can, then maybe she'll be good against like other melees. Like maybe if you pick Camille or Fjord or something, maybe she just fucking shits on you. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think the... At least what their goal was, and I, I don't know, like... Not trying to hate on Riot, but I feel like a lot of the time when they design stuff, they... they 
whiff the goals hard. They're yeah. like, what we're making Maokai a top laner or something. He's just like a jungler. Uh, they want her to be like worse at all inning. So like if you're up against a Jax and he jumps on you and you're just like autoing each other to death, like You'll she lose. should lose that. Okay. Yeah. But if she can like keep you just outside melee range and kite you and hit like the sweet spot on her Q and stuff, then she should win. Kinda? Yeah. Yeah, sort yeah. of like that. So I think that's more of the goal with her. But like when working. I was playing her in the playtest, I was like, you know, we were doing some like three item team fight type stuff. And I was able to just like r build full bruiser, like, you know, Sterix type stuff and yeah. just like run at their Oriana and, and just kill them. Because the, the <laughs> E is like a double slow, like you press it. So so it is easy to gap close. It's not hard to get on people. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of the people were like not even running flash on her. Like you just run oh, like shit. TP Ignite. Because, you know, if. It's like when? Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, I think she'll be really strong. Yeah, I, I can I can definitely see that. I think the one thing will probably be she'll be strong on release and then probably nerf pretty heavily like patch after patch after patch and then whether she's gonna be Competitive ready. I don't know. Then reworked five I, times. I, I, don't yeah. know, I, feel, I feel like right like either releases cha oh, Sorry, uh, most of the time like either they're really broken or they're really useless. Yeah. So like, I feel like Ambassa might be. When was the champion. last time there was a really useless champion? I don't know. Yumi was really useless. Really Briar is also pretty useless. Briar, Briar and who else? And Nefiri. Well, the, I mean, that's like day one though. But those like, champs were like useless. By don't... the way, they had like fifty percent win rate. Oh, and Solo Q. I mean, but yeah, yeah. I meant competitive. That's oh, what competitive. I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. But they weren't. They weren't even pickable. I thought Briar would probably maybe be, no, be pickable. I don't, I don't think Briar and Nefiri were picked very often. No, no, no. Yeah. Not in competitive. Yeah, I mean, because like, they weren't played at all. Recently. Smolder. Oh, oh, Aurora OP. Ooh. Yeah, with like Lucian and all that. Yeah, I think Milia's probably the least the least like OP champ they've yeah, released. Yeah, Milia wasn't that OP, I think, on release. Mm -hmm. Was it? No, Milia was first pick, by the way, when she was released. She. He. Sorry, he. Yeah. <laughs> when he when he was released, he was first picked. Yeah. Yeah, it, and, then, and then he got nerfed pretty hard. He got nerfed pretty hard. He was Akshan OP. and Neela were like nice niche champions. Like it was yeah. nice to see when it was played. Eh, maybe it won't be OP. We'll see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, I have no promotions. I am promoting absolutely nothing. Promote no promote your social media, Russ. Come on. Oh, true, 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 true. Um, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Raz L O L on Twitch. I've been streaming regularly these days. Um, unless if I'm traveling, then obviously I might not be streaming. But that's gonna be uh, Raz L O L there. Raz L O L underscore on Instagram. There we go. Cool. Well, you know, thank you so much for joining us, Blabber. Thanks for coming on again. Of course. That's gonna do it for this episode of. Cloud9 Forecast. Thank you for watching and be sure to leave a like and comment below on who you want to see next time. <laughs>